this week on Canadian Whitetail. It just became apparent hunting this down the last couple weeks we had to make some changes. We're trying to stay positive because we don't get frustrated hunting deer. It's a bad road I'd call this. Last week, for the first time in a couple of years, we started getting some good daylight pictures of the tipped out five. I mean, there's the king of boxes, we call him the tipped out five. Deer hunting is a lot like life. It's not easy. And if you want results, it's a lot of work. And like life, there's no shortcuts, no workaround or easy way to your goals. And if your goal is to hunt the biggest free range whitetails that have ever walked, it's 365 days a year of preparation and dedication. For us, that's all fueled by a passion for whitetails and to share these hunts and the stories of these deer on film. As do-it-yourself hunters, success means a never-ending cycle of getting ready, scouting, and setting up until all of that work is not work anymore and it simply becomes your lifestyle and what you do. And you do it so that when the season is finally here and it's time to head in and hunt, you have a chance. A chance for that one moment, that one second that we all dream about. A chance to experience that feeling that when all your hard work pays off, and that giant steps out. Gorgeous animal, unbelievable, incredible deer. Dean Partridge's Canadian Whitetail is proudly brought to you by Ozonix, undetectable, undeniable. Limb Saver, products that work. Big and J Long Range Attractants. The aroma is super strong. The range is super long. Excalibur Crossbow. The most trusted crossbows on the planet. Under Armour. Never detected. Always lethal. Elite Archery. The world's most shootable bow. Central Boiler Outdoor Wood Furnaces. Performance and value by design. Bog Pod. Monopods, Bipods and Tripods. The Whitetail Institute of North America. Premium food plot seed specifically engineered for whitetail deer. And by the Heater Body Suit, number one in cold weather hunting gear. You can see on the very far north side is the alfalfa. It's starting to do a little bit better. Now we've got a couple really good rains. And the south side here is the winter peas. tiptoe five buck that he was hunting last time. He's still alive and he is still kicking the crap out of us. It doesn't seem to matter what we do this year, we cannot get an encounter with a tiptoe five. The other bucks, no problem, but not him. As you've seen last week, we had a long September with no encounters with the tipped out five. And it's now October. Mike has had to return to work. And it's also become apparent that if we actually want to have a chance at this deer, we're going to have to make some changes. Whitetail Insights, brought to you by the QDMA, the Quality Deer Management Association, ensuring the future of whitetail deer. I'd like to introduce you to my friend Kip Adams. Now Kip is the Director of Education for the QDMA, as well as one of the leading deer wildlife biologists in North America. 
Now, Kip, I know most hunters are familiar with the term QDMA and some might be familiar with some of the aspects, but can you tell us right at the core what the purpose of the QDMA is sure. and why deer hunters should consider being a member? Absolutely, and, and more than anything else, it's just about education and, and just teaching hunters a little more about deer, how to improve habitat for deer, and really just to have, how to have more fun while they're hunting. Well, having more fun hunting and improving the habitat, I mean, that all increases your experience in the field anyway. Absolutely, and then it allows you to, to be a better mentor of kids and other people who, who don't hunt that you can teach. And, and just the more that we understand how to be a good manager for deer, managing habitat throughout the year, and how to understand you know different age classes of deer, it just allows us to, to be more engaged with what's going on, and that's all very good for the future of hunting. You know, I've heard before, and a lot of people that I hunt with have heard before, that the QDMA is about inches of antlers and growing trophy deer when in reality that's not the scope of the QDMA at all. That, that, that's true, you know, it's way more just about, uh, you know, measuring success uh, in, in memories, not inches of antler. You know, do you get bigger antlers? In, in most cases, yes, because that's just a byproduct of good management, but that's not just the focus, you know, the sole focus is on the educational value of it and helping people just learn a little more about deer. Well, a healthy and sustainable and properly managed deer herd is definitely a benefit for everyone, whether you hunt three days a year or you hunt three months every year. And it's certainly in our best interest as hunters and conservationists. This Whitetail Insight is brought to you by the Quality Deer Management Association. Become a member and ensure the future of Whitetail Deer. This segment has been brought to you by Central Boiler Outdoor Wood Furnaces. A Central Boiler easily connects to your existing forced air, in-floor radiant, baseboard, or dual heat system to heat your entire home in domestic water. Central Boiler, performance and value by design. Sometimes when things aren't going well, just sitting, waiting, and hoping can be your worst enemy and it was time for us to be proactive and make some adjustments in hunting the tipped out five. We've been hunting the south end of the plot at the tree stand. The problem's kind of been that the plot's been a little bit too effective as we've had a few encounters with target bucks coming out of this corner, they're feeding across the plot and then right out to the dugout. We don't like to wait, so we came up here, we got this blind set up on the north edge, on the north edge of the alfalfa rack and we're hoping that that's going to provide us with a little bit earlier encounters that those deer are going to come out the corner, right along this edge, and then out to the dugout. We'll put some big and J out here. We'll put our trail camera up so we see too. It just became apparent hunting this down the last couple weeks we had to make some changes. With Mike now back at work, it was Billy's turn to try for the tipped out five. After a couple of practice shots with his Excalibur, make sure that it was still on, Bill and I loaded up to head out, wondering, hoping that October would bring better luck on the tipped out five. Shortly after getting in and settled, this gorgeous young double throw patch buck makes his way out to the plot, followed closely by another young fellow, possibly his brother. With these two young bucks being the highlight of our evening, we packed up to return tomorrow. Although we enjoyed watching this young fellow, unfortunately he was the only one to come close to our blind this evening. Again, with several deer coming out to the plot, there were only young bucks, and it wasn't until just that last light that we finally seen three of the mature deer. However, our curse seemed to continue. None were the tipped out five, and to make matters worse, they came out across the plot, right from where we had just moved the stand from. Well, Billy and I just got back to the truck. <laughs> um, I don't really get frustrated when we hunt because 
it's just like a game. I mean, the harder it is, the more rewarding the outcome. But I'm a little bit frustrated. I won't lie, I'm starting to get downright frustrated. We moved this down because for two years, we've had this problem. Now the plots are there, the deer coming out that northeast corner, so we moved a blind up there. Checked the trail camera yesterday. The big eight pointer had been coming out through there a lot in good light. And then three of the four mature bucks came out of the southeast corner, right past the old tree stand and over to the dugout. So. Just the way a deer would do. <laughs> we're trying to stay positive because we don't get frustrated hunting deer. But I don't know what I'd call this. Close to frustrated. Yeah. Frustrated maybe, and Bill had returned home, but little did I know how our luck would change in November. It was now snowy and cold, and our winter pea plot was becoming more popular by the day, and Bill was headed back. We're just walking into the plot to put some more bacon jade out. Finally, last week we had a few daylight pictures of it on the Beaver Square. Bill's gonna be here tomorrow to hunt, so we're gonna go in and put some more down and hope that we can get an encounter open this week because that deer has been sort of like hunting unicorn, so wish us luck. Welcome to this week's Canadian Whitetail Scouting segment. Locate, learn, set up, hunt. Brought to you by Big and J Long Range Attractants. The aroma is super strong. The range is super long. The Big and J bagged BB squared versus the Big and J cube. There isn't much of a difference. It's the same product, the same powerful attractant and the same nutritional supplement, but they can have very different applications. I find the bagged BB squared works best for spots that you're able to frequent and where you're going to check trail cameras regularly and can put more out. Whereas the cube being much more compact and in a block form, I will use where I need it to last longer in spots that are far from home or spots that I may not frequent as often so that when I do get the time to go back and check the camera or hunt, the area is still active with deer visiting the block and the powerful aroma is still strong and fresh. In an area with a high deer density, I'll even go one step further and purposely use the BB squared and the cube in the same location. Because that way I know that regardless of how fast the deer may go through that BB squared, I've got that cube there to hold the deer on that property. And that's your Canadian Whitetail Scouting segment for the week. This week's Canadian Whitetail Scouting segment has been brought to you by Big and J Long Range Attractants. You're watching Dean Partridge's Canadian Whitetail, North America's premier wild whitetail show. November 30th, Billy was back to hunt and we had a trail camera card full of fresh daylight photos of the tipped out five cruising our plot for does, and we were headed in. Well, Billy's back, and it's November now. Billy hunted for, well, for nine days in October in long sleeve t-shirts, <laughs> and now it's November 26th and it's a lot colder. It's really not that bad, but I think it's supposed to be minus 17 today. And uh, last week, for the first time in a couple of years, we started getting some good daylight pictures of the tipped out five, come out to the plot with some does. Find out. It's like unicorn hunting. <laughs> as frustrating as our dismal track record with the tipped out five was, we were still excited to be heading in. Poor track record or not, it's always exciting, an honor, to just be hunting a deer like the tipped out five, even if an encounter with a unicorn seemed more likely. Billy's just getting set up. And we're doing something tonight that we don't normally do ever. And that's take chances. I always say, and not making those little mistakes kills big deer. And today we're we're potentially making a bigger mistake. Uh, this spot, we may reset it up. It's set up for a east or a northeast wind. And we're sitting tonight on a straight south wind, and that's because the spot, like a lot of spots, just didn't work out like we thought it was. And we're expecting or banking on that buck coming from the wrong direction which is going to be from the west and uh, if he comes from the west like we think he might we've got him beat if he comes from the northeast where he should and where we're set up for he'll be right in our wind and 
because he has Onyx set up, and that's what we're going to have to rely on if that happens. But uh, I think we're right. I think he's going to flank around this side, come in, you're going to shoot him, and we're just all going to have, live happily ever after. In and settled, it isn't long before one of our little buddies makes his way out into the plot. Shortly after the young buck and doe makes her way, seeming very concerned, looking to the north, downwind of us, like there was something lurking in the woods. And just seconds later we understood why, as the giant stepped out into the plot. The king of boxes, we call him the Tiptoe Five. Almost hard to imagine, the tipped out five, our nemesis buck, right there. I mean, he's just an awesome deer. He's so wide, he's a mile wide, big long time. And in this moment, as the tipped out five closed the distance and Bill got ready, all the work and the frustration was instantly overshadowed by seeing just what a beautiful deer he is and an understanding of just how lucky we were simply to be there. One of the widest and biggest frame bucks that I'd ever seen, and that night we must have been the two luckiest deer hunters anywhere in the world, and Bill was ready. Bill, you got him. Just shot the tip back five. Bill, you just killed the tip toe five. This segment of Canadian Whitetail has been brought to you by Hoyman Premium Tree Saws. Hoyman Premium Tree Saws, the first truly extendable folding saws. You're watching Dean Partridge's Canadian Whitetail, North America's premier wild whitetail show. Pretty excited here. We're, I got a good shot on uh, big old deer. We've been chasing around here for a while. Um, call them tipped out five. Oh, Billy! I see horn. I see something. Holy moly! Look at the signs on that deer, eh? Oh, that's, uh, oh gosh, that deer is ridiculous. Bro. That's uh, it's one of those deer that you you really never never suspect that you'll you'll ever get to see in daylight. I've heard Dean refer to him as a unicorn because it's like he knows when we're hunting and, and he's elsewhere. But uh... well, Billy, congratulations. That that's a deer of a lifetime with a frame like that, hey? And as hard as that deer was to hunt, you know, I mean, Mike, Mike and Steve are on the way over to have a look. Mike Sutherland put, I don't even want to guess how many days into this deer last year and this year. This deer was just a unicorn. It, it got to the point where we, we never gave up and it's probably the first time in our lives that we just said, this deer might not be killable. We were sitting the stand, not on a good wind. We usually always had the wind in our face. We sat on a crosswind just because we were sure this buck was flanking us. And if he would flank us, we'd have him beat on the wind. And if he didn't flank us, we were gonna to have to rely on the Ozonics, and he didn't flank us. You guys know that deer pretty well, hey? <laughs> yeah. I think this guy knows that deer really well. Yeah. I've seen him before, eh? <laughs> All right, buddy. Congratulations. Yeah. I Excellent. think over the last couple of years, you've had, not shot opportunities, but we've had him out in the plot six or seven times over the last oh, two years, eh? Easily, yeah. Look how long are those tines? The tines have to be 14, yeah, 14 and 15 inches. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah, nuts. Absolutely. And he really was like hunting a unicorn. That's a deer you deserve, and I think everybody's pretty pumped you got him, so congratulations again. Thanks a lot. Yeah, congrats, buddy. Happy for you. All right, congrats. Thanks, guys. Be happy for you. Well, I did mean what I said when we were sitting behind that deer, and although we probably would have never given up, I did start to think that this was truly that one deer that we may never have a quality encounter with. A deer that in this game of chess that we play every fall might just make all the right moves. 
So when he finally stepped out in broad daylight into the plot, well, what do you say? What an honor it was just to see that. All the time and all the hard work coming together and just the beautiful deer that the Tipped Out Five is. And also a big congratulations to Bill on taking what very well could be the deer of your lifetime. Thanks for watching this week's episode of Canadian Whitetail. Closed captioning for Canadian Whitetail is provided by HuntSask.ca, your information source for Canada's best whitetail hunting. Hunt Saskatchewan, Canada. Canadian Whitetail has also been brought to you by Ramcat Broadheads, Hits Like a Ram, Cuts Like a Cat, Kula Buck, Portable Walk-In Cooler Systems, Scott Archery, CBE Bow Sights, and Black Eagle Arrows. Canadian Whitetail has also been brought to you by these fine sponsors. For exclusive content, follow Dean and the team on Facebook, as well as on Instagram and Twitter, at Whitetail Dean. For Canadian Whitetail gear and apparel, visit CanadianHuntShop.com.